Hello everyone, let's talk about how to get the mode of a data set. So what is a mode? It is a element that occurs the most amount of times in a data set, right? So something like this array of numbers here, we have one, two, two, four, six, two occurring more times than any other number. So a mode doesn't necessarily have to be numbers. It can be any type of elements. It could be strings, it could be whatever. It's whichever element occurs more times in a data set than any other element. So I have a solution here for getting the mode when there is only one mode in a data set, such as this one here, there's only a single mode to be found. In other words, two occurs two times here. But if we had something like this, well, now we have two modes, right? We have two occurring two times and three occurring two times. So the next video will go over that. So let's take a look at my solution here. So I have a function, it takes in an array. So what am I doing? I want to count the amount of occurrences of each number in the array. And how am I going to do that? Basically, I'm going to create an object and I'm going to use that object to track how many times we've seen each element in the array. And so in that way, it'll kind of become a store of occurrences of each element, right? So I'm creating an empty object. I am looping over my input array and for each number in my array, I'm checking, does that number already exist as a key on the object? If it does not already exist as a key on the object, then we want to set it as a key on the object and set its corresponding value to one. Else, right, otherwise, if it already does exist as a key on the object. That means it has also a corresponding value as well already. And we want to increment that corresponding value. So what we're going to see building up continuously here, taking this nums array as an example, we're going to see something built up that will look like, right? So we'll see one first. So we're going to set one as a key and its corresponding value will be one occurrence so far, right? Then we see a two. So we're gonna set a two as a key and it will have one occurrence so far. Then we see another two and we say, oh, two is already a key on the object. So we're going to increment its corresponding value to two and so on and so forth, right? So we're building up that object of occurrences. Now we want to take that object of occurrences and we basically want to figure out, okay, given this object of occurrences, which will now, uh, based on this data set here. So we wanna take that and be able to basically extrapolate that data and say, okay, based on the fact that two has two occurrences, we want to return two. So we need to return the object key with the highest corresponding value. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to create some variables and these are going to basically track as we iterate over the object looking for the highest value. We are going to keep track of what is the highest value I've seen so far and what is its corresponding key. Now, I've initialized the highest value to zero. We'll never see a value that is less than zero, right? Because the amount of a occurrences of any object can only ever be zero or greater. We can't have a negative amount of occurrences of an object. Its corresponding key is going to be initialized to negative infinity. So this will make a little bit more sense in the context of the sort of expanded version in part two of this video. Um, but essentially, this is going to end up becoming replaced by whatever the key with the highest value is. So we are looping over the object, we're breaking out each key in the object and we're grabbing its corresponding value by accessing object at that key, then we're saying if the value that we are currently looking at is greater than the highest value we've seen so far, which will initially be zero, but then we will hit 
write this first key value pair, which is a one. And so this will be true. And we are setting the highest value we've seen so far to that value. And we are also setting its corresponding key. And so it's going to continue doing this for every key value pair in the object until we have eventually as the highest value, the highest value in the data set is two and the highest and, and excuse me, and its corresponding key is that too. Now there is one caveat uh, and we have to kind of like actually see what this object looks like in order to understand this. So I want to console log that object and let's take a look at what that object actually looks like. Now let's take a look at what this object looks like. So I have one, one, two, two, four, one, six, one, just as I expected. But there's a caveat, right? All keys in objects are string type, right? So I want to eventually at the end of this, let's, let's think back to what I'm actually asking you to do. I'm asking you to return the mode of a data set that happens to be numbers. So if the keys are being converted into strings, then that means we're going to have to convert them back into numbers at the end. So at the very end, I simply take whatever the highest values corresponding key is, and I convert it to a number using this big N number method here. Uh, that's a native JavaScript method we have available to us, and I return it. Okay, so we see at the very end, the mode is in fact two which I saw in my original data set. If any of this was confusing, if I lost you at some point, that's totally okay. What I want you to do is take this code snippet. I have pasted it down below and put it into your own editor. And I want you to step through it step by step and kind of think through exactly what is happening every step of the way. Okay, so I'm looping over my array and what is it doing? It's pushing a key into the object. So what's that gonna look like? So the first one is gonna look like one, one. So step through it step by step so you can see how the data is changing every step of the way. If you found this helpful, uh, feel free to share it with a friend and also check the link below for part two where we will be looking at how to basically do the same thing where there are multiple modes.